4, 3, 2, 1. Studio Classroom is recording. Studio Welcome to Studio Classroom on the Air. We're glad you're here because today is a great day to learn something new. I'm Anne Marie. And my name is Gabe. Friends, let's learn something new together. Today we are exploring the topic cars, specifically cars that are better for the environment. What do you think about them, Anne Marie? Would you ever buy one if you got the chance? Well, when I think about environmentally friendly cars, one word usually comes to mind. Tesla? Uh, yes, Tesla, <laughs> but also expensive. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Teslas are expensive. <laughs> I, think that, I think that electric cars are a great idea, but it's really hard for the average person to get one. It's true. Uh, I think the more of these products are being produced, the, um, the cheaper they will become, hopefully, okay. in the future and more accessible uh, and as, as more people start adopting these things. Because I feel the same way about electric scooters. Oh, yeah. Right? Because uh, they're more expensive to maintain. Mm -hmm. It's harder to find someone who can maintain them properly. Um, it is getting better, and I, so I think that over the next couple of years, it will be a more viable option that is a more possible uh, thing for all of us to do. That's a great point. Today in our lesson, we are going to be comparing two different kinds of green vehicles. We're going to learn about them both in today's article called The, the Future, Future of, of Cars, cars batteries, batteries, or Fuel, fuel cells. cells. If you aren't sure about the different kinds of environmentally friendly cars, this is the lesson for you. Open those magazines and let's get started with our first reading of the day. The future of cars, batteries or fuel cells. Which is greener? Which is more viable? Have you ever spent time in a big city that has replaced large numbers of traditional vehicles powered by fossil fuels with electric ones? The difference is stark. For example, you can chat on the sidewalk without yelling over traffic noise or feeling sick from gas fumes. The more a society gets rid of internal combustion engines, the more it increases its residents' quality of life by reducing local air and noise pollution. And the fewer fossil fuels that are burned, the less carbon is released into the atmosphere, reducing humanity's contribution to climate change. Hello everyone, welcome to Language Lab. I'm Jack. 我们先来看fume这个名词,意思是有害的或是难闻的气体或是烟雾。譬如, the fumes from the factory made the people that lived nearby sick. 工厂排出来的废气让附近的居民生病了。或者是, when Ian was painting his hallway, the smell of paint fumes filled the whole house. Ian在粉刷他的走廊时,尤其挥发出来的气味充满了这根房子。Fume也可以当动词哦,意思是冒烟或是发怒。譬如,fuming about someone else's behavior is of no use. 为别人的行为而发火是没有什么用的。接着来看, Carbon这个名词意思是碳, 比如, The more fossil fuels that are burned, the more carbon is released into the atmosphere. 燃烧化石燃料越多,释放到大气中的碳就会越多。Carbon footprint是指碳足迹, 也就是个人活动所造成的二氧化碳的分量。例如, Buying local products is one way to help reduce your carbon footprint. 购买在地产品是减少你碳足迹的一种方式。另外,我们也听过carbon copy这个词, 
，意思呢就是复写本，但是呢也是指极为相似的人或是物，也就是翻版的意思。例如 ，This is not an original painting by Van Gogh. It is a carbon copy. 这不是梵谷的原作，而是一个复制品。All right, let's get back to our teachers. Well, friends, it is time for us to learn about the future of cars, batteries, or fuel cells. Which is greener? Which is more viable? Now, right away, I see that word "viable," and it reminds me of a phrase: if something is a viable option, let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah, if something is a viable option, that means it's a possibility, right? Because if something is viable, that means it's capable of working successfully. So, if it's a viable option, then maybe it's an option that you can choose reasonably. Yeah, and we have two different options here in our lesson. We're going to be talking about batteries or fuel cells. So, what our lesson is. Is asking is is one of them better? Is one of them a more viable option for the future? Have you ever spent time in a big city that has replaced large numbers of traditional vehicles powered by fossil fuels with electric ones? Well, let's answer that question for a minute. Have Have you done that before, Gabe? No, <laughs> no I haven't I, either. <laughs> the closest I've gotten to um, to you know being in kind of a quiet area. With no pollution is just living in the country. Yes, you know what I mean. Like、mm -hmm. they still have cars、um, with traditional fossil fuel engines, right? Yeah. However, there are fewer of them. Yeah, that's true. I remember when I lived in the country in the city of Gaoshong,、mm -hmm. and、um, when I was out in the countryside of that city, a lot of people use bicycles to get around. Yeah, sure.、Um, because it's more convenient. There's not as much traffic, and you could really tell the difference there. And we're going to see some of those differences here in a minute. Yeah, for sure. So, so we could say that the difference is stark. That's what our lesson says. Um, sometimes we use the word "stark" in another phrase. We might talk about the stark contrast between two things. Yeah, that's like saying there's a night and day difference between two things. The difference is very, very obvious. Yeah, maybe you、uh, maybe you work for different leaders in your company, right? And you notice that there is a huge difference between the ways that they lead. You could say there is a stark contrast between the way Tom leads and the way that Martha leads. Well, here is the difference that we're talking about. Today, you can chat on the sidewalk without yelling over traffic noise or feeling sick from gas fumes. Well, nobody likes either one of those things, do they? The more a society gets rid of internal combustion engines, the more it increases its residents' quality of life. By reducing local air and noise pollution. All right, there's a few things we want to look at in that sentence. Let's look at the phrase to get rid of something first. Okay, if you're getting rid of something, that means it's not going to be part of your life anymore. We use this phrase to talk about trash, right? I'm going to throw away my trash, or I'm going to get rid of my trash. However, we're here talking about、uh, internal combustion engines, and so the idea is. Society as a whole is going to try not to use these anymore. All right. Well, we also see the phrase "somebody's quality of life" here. Let's talk about that. If we're talking about the quality of life, it means that as you're going about your daily life, kind of the rate or the way you feel how good your life is. Exactly. And so, internal combustion engines are really. And、not so great for、uh, our quality of life, right? But speaking of which, do you know that、uh, one of my friends wrote me? We, we were talking about cars. Okay. Yeah, and then all of a sudden he wrote the letters I C E. I C E. Yeah, he's like I C E cars are going to be, you know, gone in the future.、Oh. I was like, what is I C E cars? And then I looked it up. It's oh, it's internal combustion engines. Oh, I didn't know it was abbreviated that well, way. Now it can be abbreviated, right? So if you see the letters I C E talking about cars, it's probably talking about these kinds of cars with internal combustion engines. Well, we continue reading here, and the fuel fossil fuels that are burned, the less carbon is released into the atmosphere, reducing humanity. Contribution to climate change. Okay. Well, we did just see the key word fume. Let's see how the word is used in today's info cloud. Welcome to info cloud. Hey, Andrea, I have a question for you. Okay. Sure. What is it? 
Have you ever seen a cartoon or drawing of someone who is so mad that smoke is coming out of their ears? <laughs> yes, I've seen that before. It, it's kind of funny, and I think that picture is supposed to show that someone is fuming. Fuming? You mean like、uh, fumes that come out of cars? Well, that's right. When fume is used as a noun, it's talking about smoke or steam. It could be something hot or something that is poisonous or has an unpleasant smell. But how can a person be fuming? Well, when someone is very upset, their temperature might rise and their their face might get red. And anger is often compared to a fire or explosion. So it's like the bad feelings that are burning inside of them. Okay, that does make sense. And someone who is fuming might not be expressing their anger with sounds or words, but maybe you can see it on their face. Ah, just like fumes can be seen in the air or might be invisible. For example, Martha is still fuming about last week's argument. So she's still feeling angry and maybe showing it in her face or attitude, even if she hasn't said anything. That's right. But hopefully, she stops fuming and lets her feelings out before she explodes with anger. 当我们看到一个人充满愤怒，好像快要爆炸了，你可以用今天分享的用语 “fuming” 来形容他的状态。Fume 是烟，如果当做动词使用，那就是冒烟。如果你说一个人正在 fuming， 那就代表他因为某件事情气到冒烟了。当然，那不是真的烟，而是一个人所散发出来的那种气息跟氛围。Martha is still fuming about last week's argument. Martha 因为上个礼拜的吵架事件，现在还在生气。用白话一点的方式说，一个人正在 fuming， 代表他很火大。这就是今天的 Info Cloud， 我们下次云端见。Welcome back to Studio Classroom, friends. In the first part of our lesson today, we learned about something, and it had the acronym I C E. Do you know what it is, Gabe? Oh,、uh, yeah, of course I do. I remember.、Um, I C E stands for.、Um, we're learning about cars. We are. Inner city engines. Yeah. Not quite. It's actually. Internal combustion engines. That's what I meant. Internal combustion engines. All right. Well, friends, we are going to learn about the future of cars right now. Let's go. The future of cars: batteries or fuel cells. The future of cars. The shift away from fossil fuels is well underway. Now the big question is, what kind of vehicle will become the car of the future? There are two main competitors for the green vehicle crown: battery-powered electric vehicles (EVs) and hydrogen-powered fuel cell vehicles (FCVs). Electric vehicles run on rechargeable lithium-ion batteries. Hydrogen fuel cell vehicles make their own electricity in a fuel cell that draws hydrogen from a refillable tank. And transforms it into electricity. Both run quietly and produce almost no harmful emissions. Which is better? That's up for debate. Okay, 接下来来看 underway 这个形容词。它的意思是正在发生的或正在进行的。譬如 ，The construction of the new building is well underway. 新大楼的建设工程正进展的非常顺利。另外 ，get underway 意思是开始。例如 ，Once the train got underway, we took out our lunch and began to eat. 火车一开车，我们就拿出午餐开始吃。或者是。
the tourist season gets underway in southern Thailand around the beginning of November. 泰国南部的旅游旺季在十一月初左右会开始。最后来看 rechargeable 这个形容词，意思是可充电的或是蓄电的。譬如 ，When you go to the store, please buy some rechargeable batteries for the flashlight. 你去商店时，请买几个手电筒的充电电池。Rechargeable 的动词是 recharge， 意思呢就是给电池充电。例如 ，that computer mouse should work fine now that I recharged its batteries. 我已经给那个电脑滑鼠充电了，它应该可以正常运作。Recharge 也可以用在人的身上哦，意思呢就是恢复体力。例如 ，after Sandy completed the long and demanding project, she spent a week at the beach to recharge her batteries. Sandy 完成了漫长又艰巨的专案工作后，就在海边休息了一个星期，让自己恢复体力。All right, let's get back to our teachers. Thank you so much, Jack. Well, our lesson is already well underway. Let's see how we continue. The future of cars. The shift away from fossil fuels is well underway. Now the big question is, what kind of vehicle we will become the car of the future? Let's look at the phrase. The big question is. Yeah, we use this phrase to talk about the factor that is probably the most important or most decisive thing、uh, for the future. Right? There are many other things that contribute to the future, but really. This big question. If we can answer this one, we will know what direction our future will be. And that is, what kind of vehicle will become the car of the future? If something is something of the future, that means that it may just be getting started now. But in the future, in later years, it will be more and more popular, and it will be something that everybody uses. For example, a long time ago, we weren't all using cell phones. Actually, not even that long ago, huh? Yeah, that's right. I mean,、yeah. when I was, I didn't get my first cell phone until I was a junior in college. I、know? didn't get my first cell phone until I was in college either. But now, smartphones. At that time, we could have said, "Oh, smartphones are the phone of the future."、Mm -hmm. That's what everybody uses now. We just don't really think anything of it, do we? Well, friends, what about you? Can you think of something else that will change a lot in the future? You can talk about the thing of the future. Maybe you could talk about that in English. Well, let's continue here. There are two main competitors for the green vehicle crown. <laughs> That's kind of a fun phrase. Competing for the crown. Uh, I think of royalty when I think of the crown. I think of the king and the queen.、Um, so why is it being used in our lesson to talk about cars? Do they wear crowns? <laughs> no, they don't wear crowns. But if you have received the crown for something, it means you are the king of that thing. So these cars are. They're not really competing, but maybe in our minds they are competing to see who will be king in the future. So we'll see which one wins out over the other. That's right. Which is going to be the best or the top? Right. We see battery-powered electric vehicles (EVs) and hydrogen-powered fuel cell vehicles. And I just gotta say, I'm happy for this lesson because it's kind of raising awareness about this other type of vehicle. I had heard more about EVs before, but not so much about fuel-celled vehicles. Yeah, same for me. Honestly, I didn't realize that there was a difference. I didn't realize that there were choices to begin with. So I think this is a good lesson. Yeah, it's awesome. So we see here、uh, the difference between these two: electric vehicles run on rechargeable lithium-ion batteries. Hydrogen fuel cell vehicles make their own electricity in a fuel cell that draws hydrogen from a refillable tank and transforms it into electricity. So, in the end, in the you know, in the final analysis, they're both kind of electric vehicles, but one has a fuel cell involved. Well, let's talk about that word tank for a minute, because you know, the vehicle that my family drives also has a tank. It has a gas tank. A tank、oh. is just an area that holds something else. So, in my car's case, it holds gas, the、right. gas tank. Yeah, that's what a traditional car would have in its tank, right? That's that's why we call it the gas tank. 
Well, our last sentence, we have a couple more here. Both run quietly and produce almost no harmful emissions. Which is better? That's up for debate. Okay, that means that we can argue about it, we can talk about it, we can discuss it until we come to a more uh, final conclusion about it. Well, right now, uh, speaking of, you know, that word underway we talked about earlier, have you ever heard the phrase under the gun? Let's find out about that in today's BizBuzz. Okay, okay. So they'll be here in 30 minutes. Uh, I, uh, hey Maggie. Uh, hi Mr. Jones, uh, everything okay? Yeah, it's great. Everything's great. Uh, you know those clients we met with yesterday? Oh yeah, the ones that said they wanted to check with our competitors before signing? Yes, they're signing with us. <laughs> I told you we're the best in the business, Maggie. Uh, oh, but uh, they're heading over here right now uh, to sign the papers. <laughs> so I need all hands on deck. Oh, of course, I understand you're under the gun, huh? Uh, how can I help? Uh, you can put, wait, what? Who, who has a gun? Oh, oh sorry, uh, no, no one, no one. Uh, I was just saying that you're under the gun, you know, because this is an important meeting and you only have a short amount of time to get everything ready. Oh, uh, yes, I see. That is stressful. <laughs> oh, so uh, I guess being under a gun is stressful too. <laughs> so I am under the gun. <laughs> Ooh. So I, I need you to go to Diane and help her pull all the files we need and just just do whatever she says. Oh, of course, no problem, Mr. Jones. I'm happy to help. Don't worry. I'm sure this isn't the first time your team has been under the gun like this. <laughs> That's true. Oh, thanks, Maggie. Now, go help Diane. Sure, right, that clock's ticking. <laughs> yeah, clock's ticking. Like a bomb? Is there a bomb? There are guns, there are bombs. What is this place? Well, friends, we've talked about a lot of interesting ideas today, so I thought it would be a good idea to draw some of them. We're both going to draw an idea um, that came from our lesson, and then we are going to um, show each other the drawing. Yeah, I hope it's okay. Oh and friends, boy. these ideas, they appear as words in the lesson, so keep your magazines open, okay? Maybe you can guess what we have drawn. Um, Anne-Marie, are you ready? Uh, almost. So should I go first? Uh, okay, I, I'm ready. You're ready? Okay. Yeah. Do you want to go first? Or? Okay, I'll All right. go first. <laughs> Anne-Marie's going to go first. This is not a good drawing, I apologize. All right, here you we always, go. You always say that, but... <laughs> no, it's true this time. I think it's great. Do you know what it is? I think so. I, I, I'm not sure. Hang on a second. Let's see what we can see here, friends. You see a person over here. Yeah. Not very happy. Not happy. Um, and there's a car over there. Yeah. And there's music coming from the car. Yeah. So that's um, that's called uh, music pollution. That's really close. <laughs> he doesn't like all the noise that's coming from the car. So it is noise pollution. You got it. Noise Excellent. pollution. Okay, friends. Let's see if you can guess what I have drawn with my wonderful, talented, um, my my uh, artwork right here. What do you think? Is that exhaust coming from the car? Well, that's a good word. Yeah, exhaust. Um, I don't think that word appeared in our lesson. Oh. So an exhaust is maybe a kind of... A fume. Yes, exactly. Fumes, right? Okay, well, friends, noise pollution, fumes. These are things you might hear about or hear people uh, say when they're talking about uh, cars and traffic and things like that. We have more to learn about electric vehicles and fuel cell vehicles next time right here on Studio, Studio Classroom. Classroom. We'll see you there. A good friend lasts a lifetime I am so proud to have you in my life A good friend lasts a lifetime